जय हिंद एवरी वन माई नेम इज अंकिता रानी आई एम वर्किंग एज असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ कंप्यूटर साइंस एंड इंजीनियरिंग एट अजय कुमार गर्ग इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज गाजियाबाद टूडे वी डिस्कस द टॉपिक सॉफ्टवेयर कंफिग्रेशन मैनेजमेंट एंड रिस्क मैनेजमेंट एंड दिस टॉपिक कम्स अंडर द सब्जेक्ट सॉफ्टवेयर इंजीनियरिंग एंड द सब्जेक्ट कोड इज के सी एस सिक्स जीरो वन सो फर्स्ट वी हैव टू नो that what is configuration management so configuration management is the process of controlling and documenting the change to a developing system if we want to change in any software uh, product then we have to configuring that process so as the size of an effort increases so does the necessity of implementing effective cm so software configuration management is a set of activities that are designed to control change uh, so uh, any change that happen in the software product so software configuration management basically is a set of activities that are designed to control the change by identifying work products that are likely to change establishing relationships among them so defining the mechanism for managing different versions of these work products controlling changes that are imposed and auditing and reporting on the changes that are made so all this work like uh, auditing reporting changing controlling uh, these all are the task which comes under the software configuration management activities so the process of software development and maintenance is controlled and is called configuration management so uh, there are some activities uh, so which is divided into four broad categories first category is identification of component and changes uh, what are the software component and what are the changes uh, we have done in our software product so first we have to identify after that second activity is the control of the way by which the changes are made auditing the changes like controlling the changes third is auditing the changes and fourth is status accounting recording and documenting all the activities that have taken place status and then documenting all the activities so our configuration management is divided in these four categories so this is the diagram of uh, soft configuration management activities first we have to know who make changes in the in our software product and when changes are made after that why changes are made next is what changes are made so uh, we have to know all things like who make the changes when what and why are changes are made so uh, this thing all all are maintained through the configuration management so there are some planning of uh, software configuration management and this planning starts from the early phases of the project the outcome of the software configuration management plan are is the which might be extended or revised during the rest of the project so all product of the software process we have to be managed specification design program test data and user manual so these all are the things are managed of the software process through the software configuration management and uh, thousands of separate documents may be generated for a large complex software system so these are the things uh, which we have to plan during the software configuration management like define the types of document which to be managed and the document naming scheme and uh, second is define the who take responsibility for the uh, configuration management procedures and for the creations and uh, third is defines policies for change control and version management what are the policies we have to follow during the change control next is define the cm records which must be maintained like uh, you have to maintain the record of every change next is describe the tools which should be used to assist in the cm process and any limitations in, on their use next is define the process of tool use next is define the cm database in the uh, in which we have to maintain a record of the configuration information next is it may also include the information such as cm of external software process auditing etc
Next, there are the some advantages of software configuration management. Advantage is uh, reduces confusion and establishes order. It also organizes the activity which is necessary to maintain the product integri integrity. It also ensures correct product configurations. It also limits the legal liability. It reduces life cycle cost. It enables consistent conformance with requirements. It provides a stable working environment. It also enhances compliance with standard and it also enhances status accounting. So these are the advantages of the software configuration management. Uh, so there are basically the four functions of uh, software configuration management. First is identification. Second is change control. Third is status accounting and fourth is auditing. So uh, in the software configuration management, we perform all these functions. First, we have to identify. Next, we have to change control. After that, we have to status accounting. After that, auditing. So in identification, we identify those items whose configuration need to be controlled, uh, usually consisting of the software, hardware and documentation. And in change control, we establish procedure for proposing or requesting changes. And we also evaluating those changes for desirability, obtaining authorization for changes, publishing and tracking changes. So this function also identify the pupil and organizations who have authority to make changes at various levels. After that, third function is the status accounting. In a status accounting, the uh, main purpose of status accounting is to maintain formal records of established configurations and make regular reports of configuration status. So these records should accurately design, describe the product and are used to verify the configuration of the system for testing, delivery and other activities. Fourth activity is auditing. So in auditing, uh, the configuration management require regular evaluation of the configuration. This is done through the auditing function, like auditing function, where the physical and functional configuration are compared to, uh, to the documented configuration. So the purpose of auditing is to maintain the integrity of the baseline and release configuration for all controlled products. Next is uh, software configuration management terminology. There are the basically three terminologies. First is version control. Second is change control process. Third is documentation. These three terminologies we have to follow while done the software configuration management. So a uh, version control. First is version control. Uh, it is the first stage towards being able to manage multiple versions. Uh, once it is in place, a detailed record of every version of the software must be kept. This comprises of, so in the record, in the record, we have the name of each source code, name of each source code, including the validations and revisions and uh, version of various compilers and linkers and uh, the name of software which we have to use who constructed the component and the date and time on which date it was constructed. So uh, the name, the version, the name of the software and the date and time, all data are maintained in the version control. Uh, all record are kept in the version control. Next is change control process. Change control process comes into effect when the software and associated documentation are delivered to configuration management change request form as this is the change request form in this uh, like project ID and the change requester with date who is the change requester uh, we have to write date requested change with date what change change analyzer component affected if we uh, do any changes in the software then what then uh, what effect are done on the components next is associated components estimated change cost, what cost is of change, uh, change priority, change assessment, change implementation. In change implementation, uh, we have write three things, date submit, submit, uh, submitted to CCA, date of uh, CCA decision and CCA decision. 
this is change control next is change implementer and date submitted to quality assurance date of implementation date submitted to configuration management and quality assurance decision so this is the change request form and this form is filled uh, by every uh, one who wants to change in the software product next is documentation next terminology is documentation so in this it is the written record of the fact about a software system record recorded with the intent to convey purpose content and clarity so there are the two types of documentation user documentation and system documentation so this is the format of the user documentation first we have to write the document after that we have to write the function uh, so in document document can be system overview provide general description of the system installation guide beginners guide reference guide enhancement quick references system administration so uh, this is the documentation like uh, user documentation and this is the function how these document can work next is system documentation these are the system documentation like system rationale uh, it describes the objective of the entire system next is srs specification design implementation so uh, this is the documentation which is done on the system documentation uh, next is system test plan acceptance test plan data dictionary so all these are and uh, this is the descriptions of uh, every documentation next is the scm activities scm activities are uh, con first activity is configuration item identification in configuration item identification modeling of the system as a set of evolving components this is the first activity second activity is promotion management and uh, promotion management is the creation of versions for other developers third is release management it is the creation of versions for the client and user in release management we create the versions for the client and the user but in promotion management we create the version for other developers next is branch management in branch management uh, it is the management of concurrent development next is variant management in this it is the management of versions intended to coexist next is change management change management is the handling approval and tracking of change request so these are the activities uh, next after software configuration management uh, we have some risk uh, so we have to manage that risk assess that risk so risk is a problem uh, that may cause some loss or threaten the success of the project but which has not happened yet because risk is the potential that a chosen action or activity will lead to a loss so if you do any changes in the software product uh, then the risk may happen uh, so because of the risk uh, will lead to a data loss so probable losses themselves may also be called a risk so uh, we have to manage that risk so risk management means dealing with a concern before it becomes a crisis so uh, before the software become crisis we have to prior uh, previously we have to uh, maintain manage that risk so risk management is the process of identifying addressing and eliminating the problems before they can damage process of identifying addressing and eliminating the problems before they can damage the project before they can damage the project so risk management is the identification assessment and prioritization of risk followed by a coordinated and economical application of resources to minimize monitor and control the probability and impact of unfortunate events so basically in the risk management first we identify after identification we done assessment after assessment uh, we done the prioritization of risk which is followed by the coordinated applications so this is the type of risk first is scheduled risk the operational risk technical risk external risk or uh, programmatic risk next is budget risk so first is scheduled risk so project schedule gets slipped when project task and schedule release risk are not addressed properly 
so scheduled rest mainly affect on project and uh, finally on company economy and uh, may lead to project failure because uh, uh, sometimes the software is uh, not uh, completed on time the project is not completed on time so it may called as uh, scheduled risk so uh, this may have some following reasons first reason is wrong time estimation you give the time estimation wrong next is uh, resources are not tracked properly or resources like staff system skills of individual are not tracking properly failure to next is uh, failure to identify complex functionalities and uh, the time required to develop those functionalities another reason will be uh, unex maybe unexpected project scope expansions next type of risk is operational risk so uh, risk of loss due to improper process implementation so failed system or some external event risk so the reason of operational risk are uh, failure to address priority conflicts so it is failed to identify the priority conflicts another reason is failure to resolve the responsibilities insufficient resources no proper subject training no resource planning and no communication in team so these all are the reasons of the operational risk next is scheduled uh, technical risk so in technical risk uh, generally leads to a failure of functionality and performance because this risk happens on the technical level uh, so the reason of the technical risk are continuous changing requirement the software requirement the customer requirement are continuously changes uh, another reason is no advanced technology available or the existing technology is in initial stages next is difficult project module integration so these are the reasons through which technical risk may be happen next is external risk uh, so these are the external risk beyond the operational limits like this risk happens beyond our limits like these are all uncertain risk uh, and are outside the control of the program uh, so these external events or these external risk uh, happened can be running out of fund running out of fund running market development next reason will be changing customer product strategy and priority next is government rule changes so these are the reasons which are out of the bound external risk next is budget risk budget risk is the risk of the cost like wrong budget estimation cost overruns of the project and project scope expansion like we expanded our project uh, so uh, we also expand our budget so these are the examples of risk uh, like in technical risk the example are requirement technology complexity quality performance when we are talking about the management the examples are resources company vision capital when we are talking about the organizational uh, the examples of risk are dependencies budget prioritization when we are talking about the external uh, the examples are contractors vendors customer when we are talking about project management examples are estimating planning controlling and communication so this is there is a process of the risk management so the process describe the step you need to take to identify monitor and control risk so within the risk process risk is defined as any future event that may prevent you to meet your time, team goals so a risk process allow you to identify each risk quantify the impact and take action how to prevent it from occurring and reduce the impact should it happens so the risk process helps you to identify the dangerous and non dangerous risk and it also helps you to document each risk in depth by completing risk forms and uh, it also helps you to log all risk and notify management of their severity uh, take actions to reduce the likelihood of risk occurring and it also reduce the impact on your business so this is the risk management process and uh, these are the risk management activities first we have risk management so there are the two ways for managing the risk first is risk assessment second is risk 
control. So first in risk assessment, we have to identify the risk by risk identification. After that, we have to analyze the risk by risk analysis. After that, we have to prioritize the risk by risk prioritization. And in risk control, first we have to risk management planning. After that, we have to monitor the risk by risk monitoring. And after that, we have to resolution risk resolution. So now we discuss these activities one by one. So in risk assessment, in risk assessment, we have three activities. First activity is risk analysis, identification of risk. Second is risk analysis. Risk analysis involves examining, examining how project outcomes might change with modification of risk input variables. After that, risk prioritization focused for severe risk. And after that, next activity is risk exposure. This also comes in the risk assessment. After that, the risk control. Uh, risk management planning produces a plan for dealing with each significant risk and it also records decision in the plan. So risk resolution is the execution of plan of dealing with each risk. So this is the risk management. First, we have to identify the risk. After identification, uh, we done qualitative risk analysis and same quantitative risk assessment. After that, after performing the quantitative risk assessment, we done risk response planning. After risk response planning, uh, we go back to the qualitative risk analysis. After that, next is, and at last, we perform the risk monitoring and control. Risk monitoring and control. So, this is the process of risk management, how to manage a risk. So, uh, in risk identification, we determine what risk exists or uh, what are their characteristics, uh, duration period, possible outcomes. And in risk analysis is the process of defining and analyzing the dangers to individuals, businesses and government. Basically, in this, we analyze the risk. And in risk identification, basically, we identify the risk. In risk planning, uh, we establish risk handling priorities, developing risk handling plans, monitor status of risk handling actions. So, all the activities like uh, what are the priorities, monitoring the status of risk, uh, developing risk handling plans. So this all are comes in the risk planning and risk planning is used in the development and implementation of required training and communicating risk information up and down the project stakeholder organization. After risk planning, we perform the risk monitoring and control. In risk monitoring and control, it is the process of identifying and analyzing new risk, keeping track of these new risks and forming contingency plans in case they arise. It ensures that the resources that the company puts aside for a project is operating properly. So these are the risk, uh, these are the risk management activities, risk identification, risk analysis, risk planning, risk monitoring and control. Okay. Thank you.